I am so excited because the days are getting longer and you can feel it, you can smell it, it's in the air that spring is almost here. And today I'm especially excited because today is the day of our first real harvest of the year. And we'll be delivering this harvest tomorrow to some of our customers. However, there's a number of challenges that we have to face to get the job done. Can we get it done? The main challenge that I have to face today is the fact that I have to deal and work in all the mud. Things have been so wet and so muddy from all the rain that we've had. It's ridiculous. This has been the second year in the row that we've received so much rain at this time of year. And uh, I'm just amazed how much mud is everywhere. So having to gather the harvest and work around the mud is going to be interesting. Thankfully, I have a caterpillar tunnel that we'll be harvesting out of. So. Things are mostly contained in there, at least I hope when I go look and see. It was last time I was there. Uh, but we'll have some challenges working around the low tunnel since there's mud on the outside and around those. So that should be fun. So um, let me gather my items to harvest and uh, let's just see what we can find and have to deal with. Well, another challenge that I have today is having to wash and package our produce that we harvest. But as you can see here, Things are flooded here in our wash and pack station, so I don't think we're going to be washing and packaging up here today. So we're going to have to probably do it inside the house, which is not ideal, but we can do it in there. And we still don't have our walk-in cooler set up yet, so that's something, a project we're going to be working on finishing up soon. So I'm going to have to harvest and package today and work with the refrigerator space that we have available and just do what we need to do. And before we head into the garden, I first want to show you how bad the mud is. You can see right here where the ducks are and the chickens, just how much rain we've gotten in the past couple of days. Just look at that there. It is ridiculous. And then my foot just goes right all the way down into it. It has been just normal ground here, but now it's so saturated that my foot just sinks, sinks right into it. Ow, and look what we have here. Ducks in the garden. That's not supposed to happen. So we're gonna have to get those out of here at some point too, because I don't want the ducks munching on any of our produce so ducks and chickens aren't allowed in the garden at least right now I really like how the spinach has turned out. It has grown really well, fast, and I love the leaves on them. They'll be great alone as spinach, or they can work really well in a salad mix. So I definitely want to continue to grow this Galilee spinach. Highly recommend it. Also, as you may notice here, there's a lot of water on the outside of our beds. And one of the reasons why I covered this bed was to protect it from the cold temperatures that we had the other night, but also to protect it from all the rain that we have had. Which are crops, if they get too much water, it'll actually turn the leaves yellow, and that's not good, especially for uh, a leaf, leafy green. You don't want the leaves yellow on your green. Thankfully, I've made raised beds and the race beds really help with water drainage and the water running down and covering them helps as well. Uh, up here I still need to work out a trench and make it a little bit deeper so that way the water runs a little bit more because these crops here are having to be saturated uh, with water and we still need to make a better drainage up here so 
that's a project for another day. And for those of you who don't know the layout of our property, our garden, it is on a terrace. Up here is an upper portion, then it slopes down, and then it comes here to a flat part, and this part is terrace too. And that's where some of our beds are in our caterpillar tunnel. And on down on the other side, it slopes down, and then there's some uh, another terrace. So that too has helped with drainage and if it, if we didn't have that and it was just it was just a slope you'd wash all your soil away and it would wash your seeds away and it just is very hard to manage it on top of that so that is why I really recommend terrace gardening for those of you who are on a slope uh, I'll talk about that more in a video to come if you want but uh it definitely makes a big difference if you're on a slope terracing the land. Alrighty, inside our caterpillar tunnel here, things actually look pretty good. And this is where, where we're going to be harvesting from in addition to the spinach that is up there. We have our lettuce here, which we'll be harvesting some leaves from. And we have some of our scallions which we're going to be harvesting from as well and we're going to be gathering some radishes too from up here while we're at it here is a look at some of our swiss chard and some of our other lettuce transplants that are doing pretty good so those aren't ready to be harvested yet but they will be fairly soon we also started some arugula over here which is sprouted I just love salad mix and mixing them with kale and the various colors and when I add the spinach it'll make it pop even more even more flavor too but you hear that sound there's another challenge more rain so I probably should get out there and harvest the spinach leave here go back out of the caterpillar tunnel up there where I just showed you at the top of the garden where the spinach is and harvest that before it really pours down because we have more rain in the forecast. So, it is what it is. I think I'm gonna have to get some help though. Maybe somebody can hold an umbrella or something. I am so tired of rain right now. It's so annoying having to work in all this mud and rain. Ah. Oh no. Get out of there. All right, well, I need some backup. Facing a number of challenges out there in the garden, and right now the ducks are getting in there eating the spinach that I'm trying to harvest. So, uh, and it's starting to rain on me. So, if you give me a hand, that'd be that would be very, very helpful. We can do it. So Lacey, if you and Sayla could help get the, the ducks back into the fence. I'm not really sure how they got them out. I'm not going to handle them since I'm still dealing with uh, handling the, the greens and the produce. So, Sayla can do it, right? Yeah! And, it does. and Micah too! <laughs> Just do it like you know how to do it.
Good job, ladies. And Micah got some eggs. You got some eggs there, Micah? Mm -hmm. All righty. I'm going to go ahead and harvest this spinach. Rain held off, so hopefully it holds <laughs> off so we can get done. If you could go ahead and harvest the radishes, you can harvest them from the outside of the garden. Okay. And uh, that would be great. So maybe we can knock this out before the rain comes again and pours down on us. So hopefully we can stop that. Look at that. That's pretty. It's so much easier to harvest in the caterpillar tunnel. As you can see right here, I'm harvesting this spinach and I'm having to squat and move and in this mud here, it's just not fun. So, trying to get out of here as quickly as I can. <sighs> but I must say, I really like the spinach. Ooh, and what's that behind me? Just a little bit of blue sky. Maybe it's just a little tease, but I'd love it if the forecast changed and it was sunny the rest of the day. And one thing about this spinach here, as well as most of the greens that we grow, they, we can get multiple cuttings off of our greens, which makes the growing the crop even more profitable. It means that you're going to get even more of a harvest, multiple harvests, not just one. So it maximizes the effort that you're putting in growing the plants and and you don't have to immediately get rid of them after you do a harvest. You can get multiple harvests from it. Here you go, bud. You gonna help me? Okay. Here we go. Help her. What are you doing? Do you like those? Mm. Lacey has harvested a number of radishes here. Some of them are small and some of them are big, but I really like them. They look really neat. We did a number of different varieties here. And there's a few that didn't grow very well, but they're going to make perfect greens for the ducks and chickens. And Sailor's going to help out and take those. Up there to them, right? Yep. because they have no more green seeds because all the mud that they have. Well, now they do. Thank you very much for helping out with harvesting. It definitely is saving me some time. So if you could go ahead and go inside and wash those greens that I harvested and I'll finish harvesting the root crops. Okay, I can do that. With our wash and pack station currently a mess, Lacey had to go back to washing, drying, and packaging our greens the way we used to do for a number of years now. Alrighty, since it's not raining right now, I'm gonna go ahead and try to harvest these carrots that are right here under this low tunnel. See what we get. Oh. 
So look at what we have here. Look at these carrots. We got all of this just from this 25 foot bed. So uh, it's not ideal. It's not my favorite thing to do is harvest carrots when the ground is wet because the dirt and mud just likes to stick to, stick to it. Makes it a little bit harder to clean and, and get them out of there. But um, once it's, when it's dry, the, the, the soil comes off of the carrots a little bit easier. It just kind of crumbles and falls off of there. But um, we got it done. Nice looking harvest here. Especially for some of them being planted a little bit closer together than, than we should. We don't have a, a cedar yet. So uh, that's something we look to and plan to get at some point. But we don't have it yet. But overall, I think they look really good. And I really like the yellow ones. Also, it's like, wow. Sun's coming out a little bit more. So uh, hopefully it looks like God's answered my request for, uh, for some sun and some dryness. So uh, continue to ask and uh, hopefully the next few days dry out too. That'd be great. All right, I have one more item that we're going to harvest here and that is our scallions. After we harvest these, then we're going to go ahead and wash them off, wash off our radishes and our carrots while Lacey is taking care of the greens and look at that more sun it's like whoa where's mike going he's going we have a few unwanted plants growing here so uh we'll pull these out at some point we're going to focus on harvesting the scallions right now and what i like to do is instead of just pulling them directly off which will break them i like to go ahead and use this little trial here garden trial loosen up the soil and just kind of shake it off so that the way they come out with that still intact. I like to have that, that bulb there instead of having it broken off somewhere right there. It just looks better. Wow, and look at there, the sky is almost completely clear now. Don't have to worry about rain anymore today, thankfully. And I'm making a lot of progress with the carrots here. However, I'm reminded once again of another reason why I don't like harvesting carrots when it is muddy and wet. Because in addition to it being hard to get the soil off, when you're harvesting them, it's also hard to get it off when you're trying to clean them off. It's like things just stick to them all around. It's just not fun to deal with. But like I said, I'm almost done. This wasn't our biggest nor best harvest that we've had on the farm, but this small harvest represents the start. It feels good to know that there's more to grow and more to harvest. And it feels really good to know that the work that we do out on the farm will go to feeding people.